Hello everyone, Sertelp here. So this will be our third episode on using optimization through Python for FPS. In the last episode, we generated an optimization script which is able to optimize a single period, assuming that we are on a wildcard chip. So in this episode, we will create a multi-period optimization model where we take your initial squad into consideration and also your free transfers and in the bank amount so that you will be able to see how all these connect together how we create an initial squad and then how we make transfers using optimization where optimization drives everything so that you can maximize your objective again in this episode we will talk about different objectives uh, especially the, a decayed objective where uncertainty is higher so that you can penalize future game weeks more. I will assume that you already have some kind of prediction data available. This could be a model you generate yourself or you could use some uh, available tools like fbireview.com so that you can download these predictions, maybe adjust expected minutes uh, by yourself and then when you download the file in the CSV format or whichever format you prefer you can feed this into optimization so that's all we need in this episode so you need to have a prediction for future game weeks since we are so close to the end of the uh, the season so the, the data I downloaded from FBI review includes only uh, five weeks of data let me right click and open preview so it starts with week 33 and goes all the way to 38 so all, obviously we have some games that haven't been scheduled yet so to compensate you can add those values to uh, maybe 35 points by yourself but here I will just assume that you already have these data available ready and then you clean the data I will use the values as is I haven't changed anything after I downloaded from FBI review first of all open the task to the right side so you will see what we will do in this episode uh, first of all we will start with uh, reviewing our best model um, let me open the single period python file we created in the last episode uh, you might remember a little bit but we were reading data from uh, official fpl api and then we were using fbi review uh, predictions here and then we have a separate function for getting the data and then solving the single period FBL problem. So the only parameter we had here was budget and we were assuming that you are on this budget and you are trying to maximize your expected points under this budget. So in a way that we are solving maybe a free hit problem or maybe wildcard problem but only for a single period. So you are allowed to bring any player you want in this model as long as it, so those players are within budget. So this is the optimization problem that I solve on FPL Optimize every day. You can see the optimal lineups and the squads uh, under this uh, optimization model. So just reviewing what we have done last episode, we read the data from these two re uh, sources and then we fed uh, the, the value so we read the data and then remember we had our variables, we have a squad variable uh, showing whether this particular player is in your squad or not and then we had the lineup variable and then captain and vice captain variables or all, are, uh, all of these are binary variables essentially showing uh, whether you have this particular player in your lineup or not. So it is a true or false or zero one uh, variable. And going over constraints, so remember we had the squad, lineup counts, and valid uh, formation constraints. Let's go over them. So we were forcing optimization to have 11 players in our lineup, and then exactly one captain, one vice captain. We were also forcing lineup players to appear in squad for sure and similarly for captain and vice captain we were forcing in a way that whenever we have a captain that player should be in our lineup and here we were forcing uh, captain plus vice captain less than or equal to one meaning that the same player cannot be chosen for uh, captain and vice captain so this is done this is done and so these 
constraints, I, I am calling them uh, variable relations, how these variables interact with each other. And then we had team restrictions. You will see here we were forcing maximum uh, number of players in the, the squad and also uh, forcing a, a valid lineup. And here under this team limit constraint, you can see that I was saying uh, we were summing up the, the squad players from a particular team and we were iterating over all teams by the way and summation of players in your squad should be less than or equal to 3 so this is the team limit from the FBL uh, problem definition and as I mentioned before uh, we were using budget uh, so we were feeding it uh, as a, a parameter to this uh, um, function and we were saying that the price is less than or equal to budget and price is actually a calculated field it's an expression where we were summing over all the players and we were choosing the players and we were summing up their cost finally under here we were defining our objective uh, remember we were using uh, a total expected points as our uh, objective since uh, CBC is always minimizing the objective we were making it a negative total XP and we were writing it to an MPS file and then finally calling our solver CBC for this MPS fi file solving it and then generating the solution file okay so finally here we were opening a process feeding this command so that it is as if you are running this single command in your command prompt um, and now finally when we have the solution we were waiting for optimization to terminate we were reading the solution and then printing uh, whatever we have so this is all good so this model works fine in this episode though we will just um, make this better how we will add a game week dimension so you will be able to solve the multi-period problem so for this purpose what I will do is I will just copy this er copy all of this file create a new one called multi-period pi and I will just paste everything and we will go over this so let's so base model review is done let's go to housekeeping first of all let's disable unused packages uh, from here, uh, the one um, the one package we don't need anymore is this cache function. I mean, you can still use. Remember, cache function was caching the data. So if you are making multiple requests, you will be able to uh, use the cache data instead of making queries every time. But we don't need it here because we will be solving this problem only for our own uh, team once. Um, besides this copy data and single model function so I, I already copied the single period problem and so here um, as you see we are getting data and solving the single period so let's convert this to multi period FPL and also here at this part let's delete everything and I will call pass for now until we have the function ready and working and let's see and I already mentioned but I already have the data for uh, this week's predictions uh, you can use any kind of prediction here um, I think we are ready to start we reviewed the model we changed a few things uh, here and there and okay so now we are starting first of all we need more parameters to this function I mean we were only getting the budget but this is not enough for this one As actually we won't have budget in this function the first uh, parameter we will need is team ID this team ID will be your your own team ID so we will get we will read your current squad and then we will make adjustments we will suggest transfers based on your cur current squad uh, so we will also uh, feed the game week which game week we are trying to uh, optimize for so this is the the game week number for the upcoming week um, so it is easier to feed this as a parameter we can always get this value uh, from the official FPL API but uh, this will be safer for us and the third parameter is free transfers how many free transfers you have now so this value is not 
uh, like readily available in API so it is better to give this fu this value uh, like, like this way um, as a function parameter so it will make our lives easier and the third one is your in the bank in the bank amount so again it might be possible to get this value from official FPL API and the fifth parameter we have is horizon so this will show how many uh, game weeks you are trying to plan in advance so FPL review is uh, giving up to eight game weeks although now that we are close to the end of the season uh, I think data is limited to uh, six game weeks now but you will be able to control horizon so this might be a little bit of interest here because remember in the exile model when we created the FPL optimization problem using uh, open solver one of the problems was extending the formulation to multiple game weeks so you can write a model for three game weeks you can create another one for five, for five game weeks but it is not an easy uh, transition from one to another in here though since we are using horizon as a function parameter you will see how we will be able to use this I mentioned briefly but essentially we will use uh, two different objectives so I will add objective uh, as a function parameter and finally um, uh, my last parameter here is uh, DK base um, so this is how you would like to penalize future game weeks so I will also even assign an initial value 0 0.84 uh, based on uh, uh, Trout's uh, experiment on this uh, but essentially you will be able to play with this value later okay so we added our function parameters now we need to figure out how we need to how we can use these and first of all data with longer horizon we already downloaded loading initial squad is our first task first of all remember we were giving team ID to this function right so we need to feed this into get data function too because now get data should be dependent on your team ID because here we need to get we need to make another request so I will say request get and then here we need to know uh, the API uh, URL for getting your picks. So if you go to fploptimize.com, here I, I list all the uh, API endpoints, click on it, and then here this one shows squad picks, click on it, and then here just put your team ID. Um, I will use this one and then game week 32. Um, if you open it you will see uh, this is in JSON format if you don't know what it is don't you don't need to worry about it uh, what you need to know is here under picks um, this API gives us a list here th this is the list of all the players you have in your squad and as you see we don't see the names but we know that the player IDs which we can match from the uh, uh, other parts of the API so essentially we will be using this URL so let me go back here let me put this and this will be your team ID so I'm writing it in curly uh, braces and I'm putting F to the beginning so when this function runs uh, it will replace team ID with this parameter here and also we need to know which game week it is um, so we can even pass this as a function parameter here one thing to note is we need to give minus one because we would like to get picks for the last week because I mean obviously we don't know um, the, the future game week and only data available is the last one so here when we run it this way um, uh, now we need to get uh, the picks data from this request calling r.json so this function essentially will convert this json encoded data into a python variable so if it is a list of json uh, if it is a list in json then we get a, a list here too or if it is a dictionary then again this pix data will be a dictionary and checking the structure this is already a dictionary you can see the key 
and the value pairs and the key we are interested is interested in is picks as you see picks is giving us a, a list so let me go back here I will say initial squad is essentially um, picks data picks so here though we don't need to get all of these I mean this is also showing us the position of the player uh, and then the multiplier whether if it, if the player is the captain or vice captain or not we don't need to know about all this the only thing we are interested in is the element ID so I, I will come back here I will convert this into a, a, a smaller list by taking the the element for i in pick. So this is a list, so we will iterate over it and then get the element IDs. So now we know the initial squad. I will return this. And here I will say initial squad is data initial squad. Okay, awesome. We are done with the data part. Now we need to modify our variables. First of all, we need to add game weeks uh, into uh, these variables as a new uh, dimension. And for this purpose, actually, let's uh, make things a little bit uh, organized. Let's uh, let's separate these uh, blocks. Uh, and the first one is our data. The second one is our set. So these sets. Uh, are actually what we use uh, to define our variables. So we have players, element types, teams, and then what we need is game weeks, which is coming from um, essentially we are we are going to use the horizon. So we know the next game week from the uh, FPR review data. Essentially, we by the way we can also use this game week value here. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as they match. So uh, you can go the extra mile and then do it but I will call this a list and it's a range starting from next game week and next game week plus horizon we have game week so and also I need another version of this game weeks you will see the reason in a second but uh, let's call this all game weeks and this is essentially uh, the same list with the the last week included so we need to add the, we need to create this set so that we can actually track our uh, in the bank amount better so I will just add this list so I'm just adding a, sing, a new member uh, to the beginning and so here I am creating the model instead of a single period let's uh, create actually create a problem name uh, here so that we can refer it later so this is multi period and then um, we can even put the, the parameters to the file name so that we can understand which problem we have solved uh, so age horizon what else uh, oh um, let's get the only the first uh, letter of the objective and we also we can also put the uh, DK base so we can refer to it so now I will use this problem name here instead of the single period okay so here under variables uh, currently uh, our task is adding game week as a new dimension right so we create the game week so we will add these uh, these two uh, new sets into these variable definitions so the first one squad will require all game weeks including the, the last game week because um, we have information about which players we ha currently have but regarding lineup captain and vice captain our previous choices doesn't matter so I will only use game weeks here and I will just copy uh, here and here um, let's see so we have squad lineup captain vice captain players and game weeks okay we added game week as a new dimension to our variables we need to add new variables though we need to add uh, transfer in essentially it is uh, 
the variable that will track whether we have transferred a player in this uh, game week or not and let's call this transfer in and then variable type is so binary similarly we need to have a transfer out similar structure we added these two okay so the next uh, variable we need to have is uh, free transfers and then we will add penalized transfers and we will add an auxiliary variable for transfer hits I will do this later uh, in a second first of all let me go through the constraints and try to add these game weeks as a new dimension because this part will require some explanation and before we move to constraints I will create uh, dictionaries here so you can remember we were already creating a few dictionaries here but just to make this a little bit clear uh, for future use I will move some of them here so this is not a dictionary uh, but we will use something similar I will delete this price from here and we need to have uh, a way to refer to player price so I will create a new uh, um, so dictionary here uh, I will just use our merge data and remember we have a, a column called now cost uh, but we need to divide this by 10 after dividing it we can convert this to a dictionary using to dict uh, a method and so after this one now we can c calculate the sold amount so this is this will show us uh, for a particular a game week how much money we are making by selling players so this is in a way is our uh, revenue so for every game week so W is equal to expression sum and here I will refer to player price now because it's the dictionary we uh, we can use here we are assuming that player prices don't change for future game week so we are using the current values uh, obviously this can be uh, modified but it's up to you and then we will call transfer out transfer out remember is the binary variable so we will multiply this uh, uh, this variable 0 or 1 variable with the player price uh, taking the sum yeah essentially this is it so this is 4 W in game weeks and similarly let's calculate how much we are uh, spending for buying players this this time this is transfer in um, and finally uh, in order to use it in the objective to refer the uh, total points instead of uh, you know getting the value here let's create the dictionary here so that we, it will be easier for us to refer to it points um, player week is essentially a dictionary but each key should have two uh, indices first one is the player and the second one is the game week so I will refer this as 4p in players 4w in game weeks and here I will call merged data and get the location of the player and then uh, remember what we were doing here we were getting next game week points instead of here we will use w w underscore points because that's the structure of this data let's remember so we will use 33 underscore pts for referring to points so after this step we will have everything in a dictionary format so that writing the constraints will be uh, easier um, and I think we I forgot to edit it here but we also need to have the initial uh, conditions so I will just call it here initial conditions the first initial condition we need to have is which players you already have in your squad so I will say model uh, at constraints and here you will need to have squad player next game week minus one so this is the previous game week and we know this is equal equal to one for P in initial squad remember this was uh, a list of 
player ID so I'm saying that this player was in my squad last game week and so this is name initial squad players so similarly we need to uh, tell optimization that the players that do not appear in this list should be equal to zero so this will be for p in players if p not in initial squad and then let's call this others so the next variable we need to add is our um, in the bank amount I think I forgot to add it to here but essentially in the bank amount is our uh, continuous variable so in the bank is model add variables and it, the uh, index of uh, this variable is all game weeks because we will use the previous game week data too and we don't need to know the, so it is not associated with the player so on the index we have is the game weeks uh, name is ITB and variable type is so if you don't give a variable type uh, says optpy assumes this variable is a continuous variable but we will uh, give it anyway uh, and then the lower bound should be zero so you can never have uh, a negative in the bank amount so using this now I can write the initial condition at constraint in the bank uh, next game week minus one is equal equal to ITB remember uh, ITB itself is coming from the uh, as a function parameter and then the name is initial in the bank amount okay so here um, squad count um, so we were using squad count okay this should move to here actually um, we were counting how many players we have in total as an expression but now this should be uh, a dictionary because we need to count this uh, number for every game week separately so here I will add W here so this will be sum over uh, all the players for this particular game week so this will be for you in game weeks okay in the constraint then we will say I will make this plural because we need to write this constraint for every game week now I will say squad count W is equal equal to 15 for W in uh, game weeks squad count yep the second one is line up so again we need to do the same thing so I will make this plural I will open another parentheses here I will add W so and then I will add for W sorry I will say this is equal to 11 for W in game weeks same thing Okay, so um, I made these. Uh, I added the game week dimension to these constraints. Similarly, I will do the same here. I will fast forward this part, but the idea is essentially the same uh, as you see. In this case, though, since we were writing this for every player, we need to add W here right after this one for W in game weeks. Okay, I think we are ready for this part. We uh, added dimension to existing constraints partially. Uh, we will see more in a second. We need to drop the budget constraint uh, for once. Okay, for these constraints, so we need to have we need to find the lineup type count, right? So we need to add a week as a new uh, dimension here, similarly here, and we need to sum over 
line up and scout players in a way that we need to add uh, the dimension and then this will say for t in element types for w in game weeks similarly here we need to iterate over game weeks now here in this constraint we need to add w as a second index here um, and then we need to say so this constraint should happen for w in game weeks and here for w in game weeks okay and here we need to add w here as a second uh, index and we are summing over all the players which belongs to a particular team then uh, this for w in game weeks should come after this one because we need to make sure we don't have more than three players in a part from uh, from team t every week separately okay so we added all these uh, dimensions so the new constraints we will have i will just say this transfer um, uh, constraints as a uh, subheader here so in order to have a player in your squad you should either have it from the previous game week or you should buy that player this week and if you have a player for already and then if you sold that player that player should not appear in your squad so essentially since squad is a binary variable here zero or one so what we can do is we can get the squad of the last game week plus where transfer in minus transfer out so essentially that that relation will be sufficient to model whether you have a player in your squad or not so I will say model add constraints here squad PW is equal equal to squad PW minus one so this is the previous game week plus transfer in this player PW minus transfer out p w um, and here let's see so this should be equal equal to this one for every uh, p in players for w in game weeks and the name is um, let's call this squad transfer relation okay uh, the second one is uh, related to our budget so we will we need to track our uh, in the bank amount right so this will say model at constraints and here uh, my in the bank amount W is equal equal to my in the bank amount uh, the game week before plus sold amount so this is why we were calculating sold amount uh, earlier here w minus bad amount w uh, for w in game weeks yes comma name and this is our continuous budget um and finally our transfer hit uh, constraints so transfer hit constraints uh, are actually uh, this will connect uh, how we are modeling uh, the free transfers and then the penalized transfers um, I will do that in a second um, but we need to add variables first let's go back to variables remember we need to add free variables penalize variables and auxiliary variable for transfer hits uh, let me show you what we were how we were uh, applying the tra free transfer logic you, you might remember this from the Excel uh, tutorials I made but essentially uh, the current free transfer amount is dependent on how many free transfer you had the previous game week and how many transfer you have made so the the formula is as minimum of these two numbers and either you cannot have more than two free transfers and it should be maximum of either one or free transfers minus transfers made plus one so this is how it looks like if you have one free transfers in the pr last game week 
and if you have this many transfers made so f minus t is listed here and then we need to create an auxiliary variable I call a here which takes value 0 or 1 so this is a binary variable and if we model it this way I will explain what's going on here in a, in a second but a plus 1 will be equal to how many free transfers we will have in the, the following game week and the logic here is as how many free transfer you have minus how many transfers you made if this value is um, a positive value okay so if this is 1 or 2 right then a will be forced to take value 1 otherwise this constraint will be violated similarly if f minus t is 0 or less than 0 then this constraint will turn into 0 greater than or equal to this part and this part can only so th this part essentially forces a to take value 0 because otherwise you can see that um, if a is 0 this will turn into 0 and this will turn into minus uh, 14 essentially this is how many uh, you know transfers you can have maximum uh, because you can recreate your entire uh, squad uh, and if you have only one free transfers one one minus 15 this will be minus 14 so this is what this uh, represents but yeah so this is the free transfer logic um, this is what I will uh, try to create here I will say first of all let me add the, the variables so the first one is free transfers so this will track how many free transfers you have available uh, in in the game week I will use all game weeks again because we will have an initial free transfer uh, uh, count I will call this free transfers and the variable type is an integer because you cannot have a fraction uh, this should be an exact number and uh, even more we know that the lower bound of this variable is 1 and then the upper bound is 2 so we can have this value either 1 or 2 as an integer and the, the second one is penalize transfers and model add variables um, penalized transfers are only defined for game weeks because we are not interested what happened in the last uh, game week uh, regarding penalized transfers uh, but variable type again is an integer but lower bound is zero you cannot have less than uh, zero penalized uh, transfers and as I mentioned we have an artificial or auxiliary variable I will call uh, AUX and this will say model add variables this is defined for uh, game weeks and name again the same and variable type is equal to binary okay so we have our free transfers penalized transfers and auxiliary variable and we explained what it is now we can go back and write the constraint here so um, as I mentioned uh, we need to have first of all we need to have an initial condition right so I will say model at constraint and I will say my free transfers for next game week minus one is equal equal to free transfer which is coming from the the function parameters here and I will call this initial free transfer okay so we have the initial free transfer now um, we can come here and um, before writing the constraint we need to create a dictionary actually so I will come here to the dictionary part and I will say number of transfers in a game week is essentially expression sum and I will I, so we can either uh, sum transfer ins or transfer outs uh, it doesn't matter because of the other constraints we will need to have an exactly the same uh, amount of uh, players sold and bought so I will say transfer out player in th this game week so I will take the summation and I will say the summation of our P in players 
and then I say this is for W in game weeks. So this is now a dictionary of expressions. Number of transfers. And number of transfers, so we need to also create an initial uh, value for this. So next game week minus one, so the past game week. Assume you already have made a single transfer. So I will explain how this relates to all this, but if your free transfer is available to two and if you assume that you made a transfer one it doesn't change your uh, free transfer count that's why I'm, I will assume you already have made a single transfer last game week regardless of you actually did or not and here now we need to add um, four constraints uh, two are coming from the constraints I just showed you and so one of them is coming from the equality of auxiliary plus one equal to the free transfers and we will also have a constraint for penalized transfers the first constraint though is this one add constraints yeah let's start with the auxiliary variable free transfer relation so free transfers w is equal equal to my auxiliary variable plus one and name of uh, plus one this is for w in game weeks and name is equal to auxiliary free transfer relation and now let's add two constraints we have uh, that creates a relation between free transfer number of transfers and the auxiliary variable I will say how many transfers I had in the past game week minus number of transfers last game week is creates a lower bound for two times auxiliary w this game week for w in game weeks and let's call this name force auxiliary one and we remember we have another constraint for the other way around I will say free transfers w minus one again minus number of transfers w minus one is this time greater than or equal to this time it is a, uh, auxiliary variable uh, plus minus 14 times one minus auxiliary variable w for w in game weeks and name is force auxiliary 2 um, essentially this kind of a relation called a big M constraint and tighter this value is uh, better for the problem uh, I won't go into details of why it is but as long as you understand the logic here how free transfers and auxiliary variable ensures that we have correctly modeled free transfers the, the following game week it's all fine and finally here we need to count how many penalized transfers we are having for this purpose again I will create a dictionary transfer difference is essentially for every W I will say number of transfers W minus how many transfers you had W for W in game weeks so essentially this is this could be either a positive value or uh, so this could be anything right because number of transfers and free transfers are not essentially like forcing each other to anything so number of transfers could be 10 and you might have one or two free transfers but this if this difference is positive then that's how many penalized transfers you have but if this value is negative meaning that you had let us assume you had three two free transfers and you only, only transferred one guy then this is minus one so because of this we will only force this uh, penalize uh, transfers I will say penalize transfers in a game week should be greater than or equal to this transfer difference in that particular game week penalize transfer relation okay uh, we modeled all the constraints we have in the model 
I think. Uh, we will see. When we run the model, uh, we will see about it. Uh, let me call this free transfer constraints. Okay, so now um, here we were now, now the, to the objective. Uh, we were just taking the total expected number of total expected points, right? Uh, I will just put an if condition here, and based on whether our objective is uh, a regular objective or if it is a decayed uh, total objective we will have two different objectives that we can use. I mean, you can increase these uh, objectives uh, based on your uh, desired metric. Um, here, though, uh, again, I will use the same logic as before. I will calculate total points. And so this is what I will do. First of all, I will create a game week total XP. So this will be, again, a dictionary W. Uh, I will s take the summation of uh, points, player week, remember, so this was a dictionary by itself. So this was, we were giving player and game week, which was giving us the expected points. Times here, um, so we will have th this many points if we have the player in our lineup or maybe as our um, the captain or vice captain, right? So here I will open a new uh, parentheses. I will say you can get exactly one if you have the player in your lineup plus you get another one if that player is your captain. For vice captain this is uh, optional but as we did before I will put a 10% uh, vice captain weight so that you can have a good uh, vice captain every week. Uh, I won't put any bench uh, weight here. Let's assume that we are not taking uh, any advantage of our bench players here. So this summation will give us the, the game, um, total points we are getting for the game week with a, with a little bit of extra coming from the vice captain just to make sure that we are having enough points. Um, so this game week total here uh, Game week, let's call this game week XP actually, so that uh, because game week total will be something different. So this will be game week XP coming from this ex uh, expression itself minus four times your guess that it's penalized transfers because we need to take the penalized transfers out of your uh, objective. And this is for W in game weeks. Okay. Now here we will say if objective objective is coming from the the function parameters if this is uh, equal to regular so this is the regular function and then I will set this objective to regular for default if objective is re regular then um, model sets objective and then total XP. Yeah, I'm not using it anywhere else. Total XP is um, summation of game week uh, XP. Sorry, this should be game week total, right? Because we need to take the penalized transfers out. Uh, w for W in game weeks, and objective is minus total XP. And our sense is n always for CBC, and name is total regular XP. So very similar to the, the one we had before. Uh, but let me delete these uh, so it won't confuse us. Um, and else, so this is the regular point maximization. The second one is uh, in this. In this case, we say uh, DK objective. Very similar to this one, we will again get the summation of our game, uh, game week totals. But now, instead of taking this value as is, we will multiply it with uh, power, and we will use uh, DK based, and then we will say W minus next game week. 
So what will happen is this we will iterate over game weeks, and this value w will take next game week first, so, so that the the power will be zero. DK base power zero will be one, so you will get exactly the equal uh, game week total as you get from the regular objective. But when you keep moving forward, this will take value one, two, three, all the way up to eight and we are getting the power so this power will actually reduce the total number of points you are getting from future game weeks essentially making them less important for the optimization so you are giving more weight to your uh, next game week so there are obviously like multiple ways to do this but this is uh, good enough uh, for our purposes and I will say model set objective minus dk objective and sense is n name is dk xp maybe total dk xp okay okay now we need to export the problem uh, when exporting it I will call export mps and here I will call uh, uh, the problem name we defined earlier instead of the single period and finally here in the command I will call CBC and instead of this one I will again use problem name that MPS and then finally let's call this underscore solution dot txt here um, we don't need to call the OS system we will just use uh, a process here let me actually separate this process is equal to this and then I will wait for process to finish here here um, so we were directing uh, uh, output to now making so that in a way that we were not seeing the log uh, but I will just disable this part for now so that we can see uh, what's going on but I will say add say t out equal uh, dev now for disabling locks okay um, we will wait and then when the problem is solved um, Um, we don't need to do this now because we are not solving the problem multiple times we are solving it only a single time uh, I will read the problem name that underscore sol dot txt and in every line if objective value is in the line just skip it uh, this is yeah this is the same now for picks for we were iterating over players but we need to iterate over uh, um, game weeks now. Oh, by the way, uh, we completed this one, this one, so essentially we completed the model. We are just trying to read the solution back so that we can display it properly. And I will say if Scott PW is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, obviously. Uh, in, in here though, instead of just taking the players with the Scott value 1, we also need to get players which we are transferring out so that we can see them uh, in our final table. Okay, um, get the player, is captain, is lineup, is vice, uh, now we, I, need, I will add is transfer in. transfer out we are getting position as before here I will put uh, game week to the beginning uh, get position element type name uh, instead of this we can refer player price P and here instead of this one so this is the expected point so this was um, points player week yep PW 
and uh, just to make sure that this value is not a uh, long value let's uh, round it to two decimals is lineup is captain is vice and then let's add is transfer in and is transfer out and in the data frame we will have game game week and the data frame we will have game week name position type price xp lineup captain vice captain and after vice captain i will have transfer in and transfer out and we need to sort the values by oops here uh, I would like to sort this by week first uh, and then rest can stay the same and since I added uh, game week this should be true for ascending finally total XP uh, total XP in this case should be so this is just calculating the actual XP you are expected to have without the vice uh, captain or or the bench points so instead of this again we can use <coughs> po points uh, player week PW for P in players or W in game weeks get value um, yeah and then I mean we can print it but we don't need to uh, I will return uh, a few things but yeah before print look before returning it let's uh, create a summary of actions so that the player can understand what are the suggested actions for the upcoming weeks so for W in game weeks what I will do is I will say summary of actions at this uh, star star which game week uh, it is it is game week W and then you can put a new line here and then write summary of actions um, let's put um, in the bank in the bank amount so this will be in the bank w get value right and then how many free transfers we had so free transfers w get value and maybe also penalized transfers so that we can um, debug if uh, to and see if everything is working correctly and here I will just iterate over players for P in players if transfer in PW is get value is one summary of actions will say by player P and we can also put the name of the the player right so we can use merge data uh, and actually let's get the web name first and then we can get the player uh, player's name and then new line if transfer out PW get value is less greater than uh, 0 0.5 uh, same thing with cell and finally we can return the summary of actions to the user um, so we are returning model picks uh, total XP and summary um, do we need anything else I don't think so I think we are ready to give it a try and let's see if we will get any uh, problems with this I will say R is equal to Sol multiplied FPL and then uh, for the team ID uh, let me use uh, Joshua Bull's team because <laughs> I like testing with his team um, and for the game weeks let's see our next game week is 33 so I will use 33 
as my uh, game week and then the third one is free transfers let's assume we have only one free transfers in the bank amount let's assume it is 0 0.5 horizon I mean we can have only up to six but let's use uh, four for now so that we can change it later uh, regular objective and we don't need to actually pass the regular but just let's do it anyway and then when we have the solution let's print our picks maybe also print our uh, summary so that we can see the summary of all the actions and let's actually write this pix file to a csv file so that we can uh, refer to it optimal plan csv okay i think we're done for now let's see what kind of errors we will get let's uh, enter this directory and call python multipy Okay, invalid syntax. Let's see, merge data. Web name. Oh, okay, maybe I need to use double quotes here so that they do not collide with each other. Is that the issue? Let's see, all game weeks not defined oh wait I used all game weeks and all game yeah okay okay and let's give it another try and this time uh, we initialize the model but peer reference before the assignment oh yeah so in the sold amount I think I forgot to <coughs> sum over players for p players again here for p in players free transfer is okay yeah i think i referred to as free transfer in some places uh, singular or plural yep this should be free transfers okay Give it another try. Local, which one? Game week XP this time. For W in game weeks. Again, game week XP. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, players. Oh wow, okay. I think so we are having some troubles here uh, because of the uh, missing uh, values uh, and here when I'm reading the uh, FPI review data I will say fill an A unknown like empty cells with zero. Let's see if this will uh, fix the issue. okay here we go so CBC is solving the problem now we should be able to see the outcome in a second uh, I think we solved the problem but we had another problem while we we're trying to solve yeah okay yeah when we are parsing the solution we forgot to add the uh, the, the game week dimension to these variables so they don't uh, actually know uh, which variable we are talking about okay let's try again Okay, so we solved the problem. Let's review what's going on here. Um, so remember, we started the problem with one free transfers, and in for the next game week, it is suggesting us to transfer actually two players. So as you see, free transfer is one, but the penalized transfer is one too. 
So the following week then we have a, exactly a single free transfers and this time we are not using our penalized transfer but we are using our free transfer and then the following week we are not using anything and finally game week 36 we have two free transfers and we are transferring two players and we can actually right click on this and open the preview so we will see for game week 33 over here uh, what are the suggested moves so it suggests selling Kane and uh, submit row here and then transferring two players Rashford and Watkins uh, to the squad and using them in the lineup we have the captain Salah and we have Vardy as our vice captain essentially this is it we solved the multi-period FPL problem using FPL review data we try we maximized our objective and in here just so that you can see I will use uh, DK as my objective and then use 0 0.84 uh, and then I will save this solution to the site so we will we can compare I will solve this once more with the DK objective and you will see that the, the suggested moves will be a little bit different from each other and besides that I mean we solved the, the problem I will upload this file uh, to github so you can just uh, take it and play with it if you want but I suggest you to write this from scratch uh, just following what I did so that it will be easier for you to understand what's going on at every step uh, let me copy this to here and let's see actually let me open another one split right uh, let's see is are the moves are the same uh, I think it's different now as you see uh, we have the same transfers the first game week and then it doesn't go for uh, this transfer instead rolls the transfer to 35 and then uses the free transfers now so it's essentially uh, just makes essentially perform performs this rule the, the following week and then finally here uh, I think the, the transfers are the same but anyway so you have seen that uh, we can use the decade objective too you can play with the base you can use a regular objective with more uh, different budgets um, in the following episode or episodes because there are too much to cover I will talk about multi objective optimization and how you can get alternative solutions if you don't like the solution uh, for a particular reason we will talk about some extra constraints um, I will also try to talk about how to add chips to this model and for the next episode I would like to also answer your question so if you have a particular rule that you would like to enforce like for example as we mentioned like forcing a particular player a team uh, we can do that too so just ask me your questions uh, in the comment section before the next episode and I will try to include them in my video but yeah this is essentially it so we model the multi-period FPL uh, problem as an optimization model and then we solved it using CBC as you have seen we solved for five game weeks or I think we solved for four game weeks but you can solve this problem uh, you know as many weeks as you want but the performance will get slower and slower this is where commercial commercial solvers comes into play for business problems we are solving every day we have we usually have hundreds thousands in some cases cases hundreds of thousands of variables and those problems are really hard to solve CBC is a great tool for solving these problems but if you are making if you are solving a bigger problem with more constraints involved then it is b a better idea to find a commercial solver and then use it uh, for FPL purposes for these problems the problem sizes are small but in the following episodes I will talk more about the performance and how what you can do to improve performance in general if you are curious about how to parallelize it parallelize this process for solving for different objectives at the same time check my last video at the end of the video I talked about process pool executor where you can solve multiple problems at the same time and with this thank you for watching and listening and if you have any questions as I mentioned just ask them below and I will try to answer them in my following video thank you very much